It's stupid o'clock in the morning and I'm out for a bit of landscape photography. Now, what has attracted me out this morning is the beautiful clear weather you can see above me here. There's not a cloud to be seen anywhere. It's quite remarkable actually. Um, but usually I tend to avoid mornings like this because without some cloud definition in the sky, generally sunrises tend to be a bit flat by and large. However, these kind of clear skies also at least give you the 100% guarantee that you're definitely going to get some sunrise light coming into your scene and generally you get very good clarity in the air as well which makes for fantastic vista shots and that's exactly what I'm going for this morning. Behind me here this is a ruin called Killer Brega. Um, I have visited here on previous vlogs. I'll link to the top on one now, but it's one of my favorite spots on the entire island. And what I'm gonna try and do is shoot this with the sun rising behind it, which is something I have never attempted before. So I've got my composition behind me and this is actually a composition I shot right at the start of this year in misty conditions and I'll just put that image up on screen for you now because I was really quite delighted how it turned out but needless to say chalk and cheese conditions today because it's completely the opposite but the sort of the lure of the actual composition is still just as strong and I think this is going to work pretty well. So you can see that we've got this old sort of ruined building here with this beautiful sort of gable end with the solitary sort of window that sits right in the middle of it. And for me, I find that so appealing as the main sort of focal point in the image. And then you've got a collection of other ruined buildings just out to the side and a few sort of skeletal trees just behind it. And I think as a collection of points of interest across the scene, it works rather well. But what is particularly getting me excited this morning is the sun is going to rise about there so pretty much bang center in the middle of this composition um, the sunrise this morning is at about quarter past seven but the sun cresting over the top of there is going to be closer to eight o'clock and I think this could look fantastic if I can time my picture just as the sun breaks across the top of those hills there and maybe capture a sun star or something or the light as it first bursts into the scene. I feel there's a lot of potential there. So I've painted a picture of what the image looks like in my mind. It's just trying to make that a reality now. Oh wow, the sun is starting to hit the top of the peaks just over there, which means it's going to be with me imminently in a couple of minutes. So I'm going to have to put the vlogging camera down and focus entirely on getting this image because the window of opportunity to get that sun star when it crests over the top of the hill is going to be less than a minute. I'm probably going to have a few seconds to get it at its best, so I have to be focused entirely on the mission. So I'll put you down and I'll come back to you.
sun has arrived and that was magnificent. If a little bit stressful, which is not really what I like to do with landscape photography, but the shooting window there was honestly about one minute long. From the sun cresting over the top of that hill, it very, very quickly got too strong to shoot in and honestly it was about one minute long that I had to, to capture the images in which is kind of amazing really because you can get up in the middle of the night travel all the way here all that build-up anticipation and it's all for that one minute <laughs> talk about pressure so hopefully I got that right but you know these kind of shoots are easy to get wrong particularly in scenes like this where the dynamic range is absolutely insane <laughs> in the scene behind me Oh, it was mental. Settings wise, I put the camera into um, aperture priority because I tend to find when you're shooting into the sun like this, the, the light levels change so rapidly that it's hard to keep on top of that if you're having to manually control everything. Um, and particularly in scenes like this where I don't particularly care what the shutter speed is. There's no movement, there's no wind, there's no water. So it's immaterial what shutter speed I use because my camera is stabilized on the tripod. It really doesn't matter. Um, so I dial in my aperture and let the camera decide the shutter speed. Plug in a base ISO of 64 to maximize my image quality and that's about it. Um, I took two different approaches here. The first shot that I tried to get in the bag was the one of the sun star as the sun crested over that hill there and for that I dialed in a really narrow aperture of f18. If you want to know how to capture sun stars in your own images look at the video I did earlier this year at the top now. Um, but basically I dialed in that narrow aperture. I also put bracketing on because with high dynamic range scenes like this it's hard to get them right. It really really is hard to get them right. So using bracketing will give you that insurance blanket <laughs> that nice comfort that if you do mess up you've probably got something still to work with so i used um, one and two stop uh, under and over exposure bracketing because i was stressed i had one minute and i just needed to make sure i got the images in the bag <laughs> so um yeah i tried both there so i'm confident i'll have the images um one way or another. Once I secured the um, the background uh, images which are focused to infinity I then focused down on these buildings here and I opened my aperture a bit wider to so f13 um, which should give me sufficient depth of field through the scene but it should make the image that little bit sharper than at that narrow aperture and again I plugged in the, the bracketing and fired away the shots and I'll blend all of that together in post-production and hopefully it will come together. Uh, didn't use any filters for this and also I used a 16 by 9 crop in camera and the main reason for that is in this scene there's a lot going on across it sort of horizontally that's where most of the points of interest are and the sky there's absolutely nothing going on up there and down in the foreground here it's just grass. So with that sort of negative dead space at the top and bottom of the image I tend to like to crop those out and of course I can do that in post but sometimes I like to visualize that in camera um, it helps me focus on what I'm trying to achieve with the scene um, more easily I find so um, I just use the in-camera crop for that and I think it's worked out uh, nicely so fingers crossed I've managed to get this shot but it's one of these shots that you can't really tell on the back of the LCD I'll only know when I get home and I start putting the pieces of the jigsaw together. The one day that I don't wear wellies is the one day that I really regret not wearing wellies. I came out thinking, well, look at the skies today. The weather's been absolutely bone dry lately. I don't need to wear wellies, but I don't know. I'll take you down there. My feet are absolutely soaked. And that is from the dew on the grass. There's so much moisture around, absolutely ridiculous. Um, one other quick thing I thought I'd mention is, I don't know whether you've noticed, but I am using a uh, remote shutter release or cable release. And I think for these kind of shoots where 
time is of the essence these things come into their own now usually for all my landscape shooting i use the exposure delay on the nikon camera here and i usually dial in an exposure delay of three seconds and i tend to find that that's an effective way to mitigate against vibrations put into the camera and tripod from my own hands but when my shooting window is about one minute long i can't afford three seconds delay before every single image otherwise i'm going to waste the vast majority of that shooting window so i turned exposure delay off and i've used the cable release and it makes it a lot more efficient to get through your shots so i see a lot of people out there saying you don't need cable releases anymore I wholeheartedly disagree. I use mine quite a lot, and this is just one example where they really come into their own. Mornings like this are lousy for photography, by and large, but I love them nonetheless just absolutely incredible it feels amazing to be out here and i haven't seen another soul all morning well apart from the legions of midges that have been rampaging over my face i thought these little bastards would be dead by this time of year but seemingly not just noticed still got the head torch on i've got a habit of doing that in these sunrise videos i get so engrossed in the video itself and the photography that I just forget that it's on my head. Um, but that's it for today's video. I think uh, I don't think there's anything else to discuss. So thanks very much for joining me. If you've got any thoughts on the image I did manage to capture, hopefully, because I haven't seen it yet, um, pop them down below in the comments. And if you haven't yet subscribed, you know the drill. And I'll see you all next time out where hopefully I'll be doing a little bit of autumn photography because the very best autumnal colours are just right round the corner. Take care. Mm -hmm.